Hey, what is up guys? MKBHD here and welcome to the Dream Phone 2019. So this is something I thought a lot about. There is no perfect phone, there never has been, and even with tech getting better and better and amazing phones out now, it kind of feels like there never will be. But it's always been sort of fun to speculate, what if you could Frankenstein together the best possible version of a phone with all the available parts and bleeding edge tech. What would that look like? Last time I made a video about my dream phone was 2014, so five years ago, Baby Marquez speculating about the best tech available and what the most amazing phone would look like. And it looked like this. You know, I was asking for a Snapdragon 805, three gigabytes of RAM, 128 gigs of storage and a 3500 milliamp hour battery in my dream phone. So clearly times have changed. I don't know about the, you know, the doubling of every two years as Moore's law suggests, but things have clearly taken major strides since those lofty goals. So this is my new look at a concept for a dream phone 2019, plus some renders to go with it. Now in all honesty, I'm not too picky. Like I already really like some of the phones we already have that I've talked about during the year. Um, I already tweeted like my simplified version of the dream phone would be something like OnePlus 7 Pro basically with all the specs and the 90 hertz display and the OS and everything with the P30 Pro's battery and the Pixel's camera. Like that would already be amazing. But this is the dream phone. So we can really dream big and we can be more specific since we already know the possibility of it happening is near zero. So that's exactly what I'm gonna do. So the specs. Now specs are less important than they used to be, but for the sake of getting them at the bleeding edge, I'll start off by taking the chip from the iPhone XS. The A12 Bionic is incredible and as great as the Snapdragon 855 is, obviously, the A12 Bionic is the champ as far as power. So I'll take that, but then I will take the rest of the specs from the fastest phone I've ever used, which is the OnePlus 7 Pro, which means 12 gigs of super fast RAM and the UFS 3.0 flash storage and sent this the dream phone, it'll all just magically work together. And then the amount of storage is actually less important than it's ever been because of all this cloud stuff. Like I feel like I could actually be fine today with a 128 gig phone. I actually download, fun fact, my entire Spotify library offline in the highest quality possible every time I get a new phone just for flights. And that's less than hundred gigs. So I could be fine with 128, but for the hell of it, since it's the dream phone and we got that UFS 3.0, just give me a terabyte of flash storage. So that's the internals. Then let's get to the looks, the design, the hardware. So I'd have a very clean, minimal aesthetic for the hardware. And the overarching theme would be, as you guessed, matte black. And then, you know, with just a little bit of red accents and some carbon fiber. So up front, I would take the display from the OnePlus 7 Pro, but modified a little bit, taking it to the next level. Like that's clearly already a great panel, but give me 120 Hertz OLED this time, still 1440p, and also give me the brightness of Samsung's panels and make it a little bit smaller. So I love the OnePlus 7 Pro's full screen already, of course, but if I had my way, it would be that little bit brighter outdoors like the Samsung screens. It would have a little bit less rounded corners as well, and it would be a little bit smaller. So I'd say a six inch 1440p 120 Hertz OLED. Now a display like that needs a battery champion as we know. So this is a phone that's fully allowed to be a couple extra millimeters thicker, all the better to get rid of a camera bump. I'm cool with this phone having a little bit extra space to fit the dream 4,500 milliamp hour battery. So give me the, give me the battery from the red hydrogen, but also with the warp charging of the OnePlus 7 Pro, that would be crazy. And you can see in this design, it's all matte black with a slot of carbon fiber down the side, just for kicks. Give me a colored power button, of course, in red. Uh, thin bezels, as you can see. Oh, and yes, I'm, I'm keeping front-facing speakers. And then also, since I think glass backs are kind of a bit overrated, and since I've also been really impressed recently with plastics, the, the matte black on this phone can be polycarbonate, so when you drop, it won't shatter. It's all matte black, and it can also now enable wireless charging. Now, I could go for the fully all-screen bezel-less dream phone, that the world seems to be moving towards, but I don't think that's my dream phone right now, specifically because I still like a good pair of front-facing speakers. And the, the piezoelectric front-facing behind the glass speakers, they're okay for an earpiece, but they're just not cutting it for the big sound that I want. So my dream phone would still have a little top slot, little bottom slot, front-facing stereo speakers. And also, yes, I'd keep that headphone jack because yes, while I have moved on to not really needing it anymore, uh, every once in a while, it's convenient just to have one. So throw a quality DAC behind that 
and of course, USB Type-C. And then also that speaker slot up top gives me room for real front-facing cameras. So no, no notch needed, no hole punch, no crazy mechanisms, no pop-ups that don't make it water resistant. This can be a water resistant phone with real front-facing cameras, and I have two of them. I would take both the front-facing cameras from the Pixel 3, the normal and the wide angle. They're incredible quality, of course, and I love having quality front-facing cameras. So those are speakers and your cameras. And speaking of cameras, you may have noticed the dual rear-facing cameras on the back of the phone. And I've spoken on this before, but I would take the Pixel 3's photo quality from the cameras and the iPhone's video quality. It's the best of both worlds. Pixel 3 does an incredible job with just a single lens for images, but I would actually love to see a second lens with the same quality hardware for amazing wide angle shots. And since again, it's my impossible dream phone, both of these are optically stabilized and they can both do iPhone quality video. And then to top it all off, my one bleeding edge wish is an under display fingerprint reader that is the entire bottom half of the display. So no more like fidgety having to get it just right and lifting up your finger too fast. You just put your finger anywhere on the bottom half and it unlocks super fast. And then toss in Oxygen OS or stock Android. Honestly, either way would be fine with me. I think there's a couple pixel specific features that I'd want, like the now playing song ID, that's pretty sweet, and call screening. So it would definitely have those things. And just for kicks, iMessage for Android, cause why not? But generally I've been really happy with the high refresh rate, clean Android experience. Then wrap it all up in a nice low Pocophone type of price. And I, uh, I think that's my Frankenstein of a dream phone for 2019. Am I missing anything? Again, I know a phone like this doesn't exist, couldn't exist, but I also know that, you know, making my voice heard about a dream like this can possibly push the dream just a little bit closer to reality. So there you have it. Also, this video was a collab with Concept Creator, super skilled with the sick renders to help visualize the phone that we were talking about in this video. So go subscribe to his channel if you wanna see more stuff like that. But that's been it, that's my dream phone. What would your dream phone be? Let me know in the comments below. Either way, thanks for watching. Catch you guys in the next one. Peace.